Hey guys, it is Friday, so let's get into a question. We have a question today from one of my favorite question askers. She has asked questions before and she's 12 years old and she's got uh, this incredible heart for really wanting to know the truth. So you know who you are. I'm proud of you. Keep asking, keep asking good questions. And the question today um, comes from Mark chapter seven, when Jesus is having a conversation with the woman from Syrophoenicia. And the question revolves around this. Is Jesus insulting this poor woman? Like, has this woman come to Jesus for help and he just calls her a dog? That sure seems like um, what's happening. Is like, is, is that something we're supposed to do? Something we're allowed to do? Man, if I looked over at my sister when we were sitting around the table uh, when we were kids and I called her a dog, that'd be some serious time in my room. I'd, I'd, there'd, be, there'd be some consequences for that. Well, what's happening? Well, I'll tell you, le- again, the three most important things in understanding any passage is context, context, and context. So let's see what's going on around it. Let's also dig a- in a little bit to where Jesus is and who exactly this woman is and, and what exactly they meant by dog. Now, it was no compliment. I'll give you that. But when Jesus uses the word dog in this context, he's not insulting somebody like we might call somebody like a dirty dog or something. Rather, he's referring to somebody who is not clean. And here's the, so like ceremonially unclean. And the truth was, this woman wasn't, and she knew it. So let's start at the top of the chapter and just kind of walk our way through. And I think by the time we get to that story, our eyes are going to be really open to not only what Jesus is doing, but what the author Mark is trying to tell us. And In case you don't want to watch the whole video, here's what Mark is telling us. Jesus is not just king of the Jews. Jesus is king of the whole world. Jesus is not just the Messiah, not just the miracle worker, not just the savior of the Jewish people, even though that's to whom he was sent. Rather, Jesus' power, Jesus' grace, Jesus' salvation extends even to people who weren't Jewish. And that sounds pretty obvious to us today. It was not very obvious when Jesus was on earth. So let's start. Just grab your Bible. Let's never talk about the Bible without one in front of us. And let's let's look at the top of Mark chapter 7. Here we have another struggle with the Pharisees. And there's an argument about Jesus not keeping the, the law properly, right? And so there's this discussion about what defiles a person because in this culture, they really cared way more. Like we have this, like anybody can come to church and you can wear flip-flops, you can have dirty hands, you can be sick. It doesn't matter, just come to church. Well, that certainly wasn't the, the idea in, under the old law, under the old covenant. Rather, you had to be ceremonially clean before you could even come in to the synagogue and certainly into the temple. In fact, one of the most amazing things that Jesus teaches, you remember on the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus looks at everybody and goes, man, blessed are even the poor in spirit. Well, that's an old idea now, but it's only 2,000 years old. This is an idea that really starts with Jesus saying, Look, the kingdom of God has drawn near to every person, no matter whether you're sick or you've been possessed or you have problems with your skin or it it doesn't matter. The kingdom of God has drawn near to you. God is accessible to everyone. So they're they're having a, um, a discussion about what makes somebody clean or unclean, what makes somebody defiled or undefiled. And Jesus has this amazing like insight. He says, look, it's the stuff that comes out of you that defiles you, not the stuff that goes in. In fact, he says, look, Isaiah prophesied about you guys. You guys who keep the letter of the law, but your hearts are far from God. You keep the, you know, you tie the mint and dill, he'll say else, elsewhere. Oh, you'll go through all of the, the ceremonial things so you can go into the temple with your fancy clothes and your sacrifices and whatever. But he says, look, your heart is far away. He says, look, Isaiah rightly prophesied about you hypocrites. That's a huge word. This, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. So then down in verse 14, he called the people again to him and said, hear me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person 
are what defile him. Now, this is going to get, you know, with Peter's vision in in Acts um, of all of the animals that he's allowed to eat. And then as Paul teaches and as John teaches in the rest of the New Testament, this will get fleshed out. But this was just revolutionary, what Jesus said, saying, hey, it isn't the stuff that goes into you. It's not the keeping of the law that keeps you clean. And it's certainly not mistakes in the, the and, and keeping the law imperfectly that defiles you. Rather, he says, it is your heart and the stuff that comes out of you. It is your heart bearing action, bearing words. That is what defiles you. And so, so that is right before this discussion about like what it means to be defiled, what it means to be clean, um, what it means to uh, be a law keeper and what it means to really be worthy of being in the presence of God. So this is all of the discussion that Mark has been having. And man, these stories stacked on top of each other are just coming at you fast. And if you were a Jewish person in the first century reading this, you would be going, oh my gosh, like all I've heard is be technically good, be technically good, be technically good. And that's how you get clean. That's how you're worthy of, you know, atonement. And Jesus goes, no, it has, it, it just isn't all of those details and what you do. Rather, it is what's inside and how that comes out that makes you clean or defiled. Well, that's revolutionary. Then in verse 24, it says, And from here he arose and, and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. Now, the first thing you'll notice about that is he's not in Galilee. He's not in Jerusalem. He is in Gentile territory. So now you have the Jewish Messiah going to Gentile territory, a place that was, you know, and, and this woman he meets, she would have had no experience in the temple. She hadn't even been trying to keep herself clean or undefiled. She, she, there was nothing about her that was culturally caring about Yahweh. Um, there, was, there was nothing about her that, that she had been living a life trying to honor God. And yet she has this daughter that is sick and she sees something in Jesus. And so this conversation that happens far from Jesus insulting her is, a, is an opportunity for Jesus to draw faith out of her and a, a real testament as Mark. Again, I want you to think about the interaction with Jesus and this woman, but I also want you to think about Mark, the author, and where he puts this story in, in the narrative and, and how he tells the story, because it's a true story, but could have been told a bunch of ways. And, and how he tells the story, he is really trying to make sure you and I know that it's not those who keep the law perfectly that the Jewish Messiah is for, but rather the Jewish Messiah is for unclean folks like me and you. So, but immediately a woman, I'm in verse 25, but immediately a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit heard of him and came down and fell at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile. Mark wants to really set the tongue. We're in Tyre and Sidon, we're outside of the Holy Land, and the woman that comes is a Gentile. She was not Jewish, she wasn't pretending to be Jewish, nothing to do with the Jewish faith. So any rabbi would have sent her away. You know, any of these traveling rabbis, they were there to teach Jews. They weren't there to, to teach Gentiles how to be Jews. No, they were there rather to, to train up disciples to worship Yahweh. And if you didn't want to worship Yahweh, they didn't have anything to say to you. So, so Mark makes the point. We're in Gentile territory and a Gentile woman comes and falls before Jesus' feet. And her motivation seems pretty clear at first, right? She has this child that's sick, has an unclean spirit. Who knows what that looked like? Maybe convulsions. It was probably a very scary thing to be this, this little girl's mom. And she loved her daughter a lot. So now, the woman was a Gentile and Syrophoenician by birth, not Jewish. And he said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, again, dog is not an, insult, an insult like, you know, you dirty, rotten, mangy mutt. Rather, he is making the point that she does not claim to be a child of God. She is not a descendant of Abraham. She would not have 
identified herself as. In fact, again, I think I said this a minute ago, but she doesn't say, wait a minute, I'm one of the children too. No, she acknowledges, look, the children of Abraham, the children of the law, these are the Jewish law-keeping people who are God's chosen people who um, are, you know, go to the temple three times a year to sacrifice, that, that are in the synagogue, that go to Saturday school, that learn the law. And she's just not that. And it seems so usual to me and you that, of course, anybody can come to Jesus. But for a Gentile woman to come to a Jewish rabbi to ask for help, she just, she, first of all, she wouldn't have. And second of all, if she did, she just would have been tossed out immediately because Jewish rabbis trained Jewish people. But Jesus is a different kind of Jewish rabbi. And so Jesus says, look, I'm here. I was sent to the Jews. I'm a Jew. I was sent. I'm the Jewish Messiah. I was sent to the Jews. And, you know, if you are unclean, if you if you have no desire to be a Jew, you know, you, you're not looking for the Messiah. What are you doing here? So this is what he means as he says, let the children be fed first, for it is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. And notice again, as she answers, she doesn't say, how dare you call me a dog? No, she acknowledges. She says, yes, Lord. Yet even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. This is a woman of incredible faith. Jesus, I, I think I know who you are. I've seen your power. This is such a statement of faith where she says, I just need the crumbs from your table. I, it, it's like the woman who thought, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. She comes to him and says, look, I, I, don't, need, I don't need all of it. I, I don't, I, maybe she doesn't understand. She's not coming um, to, to you know, respond to the call to follow Jesus. And yet she acknowledges who he is. Oh, this is a woman who, while she has not been waiting for the Jewish Messiah, she recognizes Jesus for who he is. And he said to her, for this statement, you may go your way. The demon has left your daughter. And she went home and found the child lying, lying in bed and the demon gone. So while I, I, I agree that that's tough language as we read it today, nobody who read that first would have said, whoa, Jesus speaks a little harshly to her. Rather, they would have said, so the Messiah heals Gentiles? So the Messiah is not just here to be the Savior of the Jews, but rather the, the Messiah is here to be the Savior of the whole world, the clean and the unclean, any who would come to him are welcome. It's pretty amazing. All right, Lighthouse, be loved.